Hello and welcome to Porsche Top 5. Today we take a look back at one of the funkiest times in Porsche history. The Transaxle Era. It's more than 50 years ago that Porsche and Volkswagen teamed up for the first study of the 914. While Porsche handled the construction, Volkswagen managed the entire distribution across Europe. You may be wondering why we're talking about the 914, and rightly so. It is indeed not a transaxle model. It did, however, serve as inspiration for the team in Weissach while working on our top five. The EA 425 Concept Study In the early 70s, Porsche designers were tasked to develop a worthy successor of the 914. Then head of design Anto Lapine challenged his team to develop a coupe that was lower in production, maintenance and parts cost than the 911 of the time. But when the world oil crisis shook the automotive industry in 1973, Volkswagen lost interest in the project and Porsche decided to push forward alone. The resulting EA425 concept is mainly credited to Harm Lagai. Still an up-and-coming designer at the time, he had no idea his sketches would eventually end up inspiring the best-selling sports car in the world, the Porsche 924, our top four. The first transaxle model was a car without precedent. Engine in the front, transmission in the rear. And on top of that, the first Porsche with a water-cooled engine. The typical transaxle design featured a glass rear lid and was a completely different concept for Porsche which was also reflected in its advertising slogan, the Family Sports Station Wagon. In order to increase efficiency, the first generation 924 used existing Volkswagen and Audi engines and body parts. Porsche replaced the external parts very quickly, but couldn't prevent the 924's nickname from sticking till today, the Audi Porsche. Nevertheless, it marked the start of the transaxle era, which went on to reshape the automotive industry for years to come. Next in line was the Porsche 928. First introduced in 1977 when the 924 was still on sale, it stuck around for nearly two decades. The eight-cylinder powerhouse was presented as a sporty approach to transaxle and embodies a unique combination of thoroughbred high-performance sports car, comfort-oriented luxury sedan, and versatile utility vehicle. An early predecessor of some of today's models, if you like. Already back then, the 928's doors, front wings, and bonnet were made of aluminium, leading to a curb weight of just 1,620 kilograms and underlining its claim as the most advanced sports car of its time. In 1978, it was even named European Car of the Year, an honor no other Porsche has been awarded since. While the 928 dominated the roads of the world, our top two was being released, the Porsche 944. The official successor of the 924 was introduced in 1982. Its completely reworked four-cylinder engine was developed by Porsche itself, allowing the engineers to also copy from themselves. The basis was the 928's V8 powertrain. Finally, customers considered this model a true Porsche. With its pop-up headlights and unique interior design featuring 911 seats, the 944 was ordered 30,000 times within its first year of production alone. In 1989, Harm Lagai returned to Porsche as head designer and created the final model of the transaxle era. The 968, officially introduced in 1992. The idea was to create a family likeness between the 924, 944, and the 911 series. In order to be as economical as possible, the 968 used the same chassis as the 944. However, especially the front of the 968 was much more modern, later leading to the design of the 993 and marking the last development stage of four-cylinder transaxle models at Porsche. While the transaxle era ended in 1995, these models are still real eye-catchers today. Next week, the top five will be all about a more recent milestone in Porsche history. It's going to be electrifying.